Thanks to Colonial Brewing Co. for sponsoring the pod today. Thank you, Colonial. For those of you who may not know, it's pros and cons time. <laughs> Mr. Smith? Hey, who's that? David Zakopakarakis. Wrong. How the bloody hell do you say that? Zakopakarakis! Pros and cons. What is going on, everybody? How are you, mate? How are you doing? Yeah, going well. Big Episode week. four. Episode four. Welcome. We're really flying now. We are. Getting our straps. Yeah, four weeks since we started it. It's gone uh, very quickly, mate. It's fine, yeah. yeah. Good to get some uh, a lot of listens in. We had... How many views have we had overall on the podcast? We've, uh, we've cracked a thousand, over well into the thousands of listeners now. So have we? Yeah, so thousand, uh, all thousands of you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for Thank uh, tuning for in. Let's get into our, what, first segment? First segment, mate. Back to the pros and cons of the week. It's pros and cons time. <laughs> all right, Daniel. So my pro of the week. It's a very, very uh, great week for, for me. I... Went to the Lion King last night, the premiere in Melbourne. So jealous. Very, very, very jealous. You should be. It uh, it was unbelievable. It was at IMAX in, uh, in Carlton there, and um, I mean, obviously, it's the same, the same movie, uh, same everything. Is same it scene happened. scene for scene same? Do you reckon? Like, so I actually went home post watching it last night, and my housemate was watching the old Lion King, and it's it's not picture for picture the same, if that yeah. makes sense. They're not exactly i haven't cut like a storyboard it's exactly the same but word for word it pretty much is um same obviously storyline but the cgi and the way the lines and the animals are presented was unbelievable unreal i Um, love the jungle book and the director they'd made the same makers yes the the same exactly and that was unreal and the voice of mufasa is exactly the same guy who did it earl jones earl jones yeah 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 yeah. and his voice actually sounds deeper now because when my housemate was watching it, we I listened to Mufasa then, and yeah, it, it's amazing how similar it sounds, but how even deeper it is now. It's it so was as great. good as the original, better. Uh, I mean, it's hard to say. No, uh, nothing beats the original, and the cartoon's pretty cool. Uh, and that was my childhood. So, but kids are probably watching it now. This next, The Lion King, they'll probably go to the movies in the next couple of weeks and see it, and that'll be their childhood. So they'll probably always love that, and not really like the cartoon, but. For me, the cartoon was amazing, but the CGI last night was, yeah, as I said, it was unbelievable. Loved it. Um, so that's massively my pro. Well, my pro uh, of the week is corresponds with my con. Yep. Um, so Interesting. Yeah. My con uh, was the fact that Ben Simmons uh, came out, well, they announced Ben Simmons came out and said that he wasn't going to be playing the World Cup, um, yes. which I was gutted about because i'm going to one of the games here in melbourne so i was i was under the one of the warm-up games one of the yeah. warm-up games and i was under the impression that that means done and dusted no playing not going to see him live was pumped to see him here in melbourne well we just that, signed that deal so you never know deal. philadelphia might have said no mate you're not playing you're not that. doing it yeah, yeah. And, and what was that number that, i mean that's that the the largest contract in uh, Australian well, athlete yeah, five sporting. years one hundred and seventy mil. It's not short <laughs> of a dollar there. Yep. Um, so my con was the fact that now he's not going to play for Australia. But my pro yep. on the flip side of that is that apparently the warm up games he's still going to come for. So I'm still going to see him live. <laughs> so all us Melbourne guys going to watch him play USA still going to get to see him at Marvel Stadium. That'll be unbelievable. Unreal. I'm yep. so pumped. I cannot wait. Well, let's hope he doesn't just put the uniform on and sit on the bench that's always a danger isn't it? i mean the good the, <laughs> thank god we've just got a really good aussie team though i'm so I'm yep. just excited to see everyone yep. Paddy Paddy Mills, excited, Joe Ingles, yeah very excited can't wait to see all those boys get on the court they'll be good to play together disappointing that you won't get probably oh, well, obviously you won't get clay thompson and durant and that down but hopefully a lot of them get down there and it's still a star start which it will be still start start a lineup and yep yeah, Ben Simmons puts his uniform on for you, just for, for you, mate. Just for me. I yeah. mean, even if he just puts the uniform on, it's going to look pretty good seeing him in person. So as long as he's there, no, I wouldn't mind seeing him uh, run around the court a little bit, uh, but that is my pro for the week. What's yours? Uh, what's your con? My con. My con of the week. Now, I know last week I said my pro was the month of July, yeah, but can I just tell you my con of the week is the month of July. Goodness gracious, <laughs> now, mate. <laughs> I was excited early days just because of the amount of sport, but uh especially sunday night that was the tipping point for me i got about two hours sleep uh before training on monday hopefully john's not listening to this <laughs> uh that uh yeah so obviously we had the world cup final you had the men's wimbledon final the british grand prix imagine being in london at that st- at that stage like on sunday too by the way you had those three events all around town how would you even pick 
You wouldn't be able to book a book a accommodation anywhere. Imagine anywhere. if you were just randomly in town. Anywhere, like, yeah. Well, I can't book accommodation. Can't book anywhere. accommodation, yeah. And what do you choose between? You choose between tennis, so, uh, tennis, uh, the, the Cricket World Cup and the Grand Prix. It's like, what the hell do you choose? So, those are my... Um, so, my, my con is the fact that I got zero sleep. Tour de France 2 was also on. So, I was yep. flicking between four things. And the fact that the world, which I love, the tennis went for five hours. The Cricket World Cup went for the, the Super <laughs> Over. So, I was just prolonging, prolonging the time I had to stay awake for it um, to watch it. So, yeah, it's, uh, I've had a very tired couple of days. So, you've gone from the pro to the con yeah, within a week. Within a week. The same pro <laughs> turned into a con. Yeah, I've turned, Well, mate. the other con on that is turned the fact mate. that England won. Well the, the, well, the con is that they that they won on a, a super over that was then turned into a tie. Yep. So that's like that's like AFL. You, it's a tie in the AFL, tie after the five minute period, and they go, all right, you had more inside fifties, you win. Yeah. Like, it's an absolute joke. Like no one, no one thinks in the thirty first over, fourth ball into the over, I'm going to hit a four here because at the end of the game, this might count. Right. Whereas you're blocking the ball, you're playing the field, playing the strokes, that kind of thing. Whereas Every single ball in that innings counts because if you don't hit a four that ball or a six, you could potentially lose a game. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Not a, not a good way to win. No. Which means it doesn't count. So no. The Poms don't win it. Poms yeah. don't win. Yeah. yeah. I was barracking yeah. for New Zealand. Yeah. So absolutely. First time in my life I barracking yeah. for New Zealand absolutely. for anything. Absolutely. There was no competition there. We were, I think every single Aussie was uh, New Zealand. Anzac, the Anzac spirit came out Anzac in full, full force. Exactly. Well, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see in the next couple of days if I get any more sleep, mate. Yeah, yep. catch up on that. Yep, definitely. <laughs> All right, let's get into our first guest, Daniel. He's uh, obviously a Geelong great, been on the footy show for 24, 25 years, Sammy Newman. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Welcome, Sammy. Yeah. Thank good. you so much for joining us, mate. It's an okay. absolute uh, pleasure to have you here. What are you uh, up to these days, mate? I was a bit worried when you said, is there anything you don't want me to talk about? <laughs> I said, no, ask me anything you like. <laughs> so on that basis, we might as well just go for it. We'll go for it, yeah. We'll get into the fun stuff first, mate. We, Will we? we? Yeah, we want to talk um, about some fun stuff. Okay. Warm, warm it up a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about golf. Golf. How mm. often do you play golf? A lot. A lot? Every mm. day at the moment? No, not every day. Do you have uh, it today? A couple of times a week, No. No play tomorrow yeah which will make no difference to uh no one will be won't be relevant what tomorrow <laughs> means when this comes out no but you play with bj morning quite yeah, a bit yeah i do yeah well what do you what do you typically play for in terms of money yeah well um i'm not sure that uh, <laughs> shane might like me to uh disclose that or, yeah. or uh, bj because uh you know in this fiscally strapped era we live in people <laughs> say you got to be joking you don't play for that who are you people yeah why are you doing that yep so we like to think it all evens out a bit in the end of course yep. it doesn't yep. i just am funding their retirement <laughs> and their lifestyle so, so it's not a revolving money that eventually comes back around you well just... you'd like to think that yep. but it doesn't it doesn't no okay. shane robs me and <laughs> so does bj because they can actually play properly what are you playing off I play off, um, well, I think I'm off eight or nine at the minute. Okay. Varies. Yep. You're a lot better than us two at the moment then, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but, uh, but it's yeah. all relative. You probably don't play. No, not, not often. You are. No. Not often enough. No, no. What, what are some of the best courses you've played? Best? Yeah. Well, I've played most of them in Australia. I've played a couple of them over on the ma uh, North America, Mainly in Hawaii. Yep. In New Zealand. The best. I think we have the best courses here in Australia and in Victoria. Yeah. I have no, uh, that sounds parochial, but you'd have to go a long way to beat some of the courses here. Yep. No matter how you trick them up. Yeah. Okay. Or what reputation they have. <laughs> nice. Nice. Have you had the opportunity to play with uh, anyone uh, who's the best person you've played with? Oh. Well, in the various pro ams, you play with uh, who have I played with? Played with uh, that husband and wife team, Jose Maria Elasabal. You played with him, yeah. Wow. I love that. Did you warm up with him with his with his cigar and his typical warm up? No, no, that's uh, that's uh, Miguel oh, Angel no, Ham. Oh, that's Miguel that Angel Ham yes. Menneth. Yes, sorry, I'm no, the I there. played. No. Used to go over to the Heineken Classic over in Perth. Oh yeah, I played with him. I wasn't sure about um, Jose Maria. He, <laughs> he was a different person. Yep. I played with uh, oh, John Daly and 
Thomas Bjorn and um Do you speak a take with John Daly? What what's he like on the course? Which is He's exactly like he is off the course. Yep. He is a uh, larger than life uh uh, uninterested in his own well-being, yep. uh, has <laughs> no that. interest in what he looks like or what he eats or what he does or what he smokes. Yep. Uh, a casual, laconic, innate, talented man who has nothing else going for him except <laughs> God-given talent. Yeah, that's it. We, we spoke about this with Brandon last week, who's the PGA professional, yep. and, and we asked him about John Daly, and he his comments were that just pure skill, and he's just lived off that. Is that that's it. That's yeah. what I said. He was He's born with a innate ability to play golf and has never, ever bothered to try and get any better. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's, still, he's made a living out of it and he's still yeah. going. Yeah. Now, you spoke about travelling overseas. So, there was one trip back in, I think, was it 2013? You went with BJ and Warney. Can you tell us a little bit about that? To, in, to New Zealand? Was it, yeah, did you go to New Zealand with, with those two? Yes. Yeah. Anything? Um, and uh, we met... Um, we met James Erskine, who is the, was the head of, uh, maybe still is, is, what was he, the great management company, what was that called? Oh, no, the, I know the, the name, famous that's right. yep. famous manager that all started yep. with him, what's it called? I- I-M- IMG? IMG, I-M-G. yep, yep. And uh, he came from London and we played with a couple of uh, New Zealand cricketers. Yep. And uh, about eight of us went on this... Uh, week-long tour where we put in a fair amount of money into a pool and or a pot and uh, then we tried to play for it on all the courses but unfortunately from the time we got there to the time we left it rained ah typical new zealand yeah well i don't know if it's typical new zealand but uh, so it was a bit of a disaster but we had uh, good fun and Shane, uh, you know, Shane entertained. Shane, if they played cricket in America, Shane would be as big a pop star as there is in the world. Yep. So they mob him wherever he goes because he's of his, uh, he is unbelievable. <laughs> and he's a very nice man and handles it well up to a certain extent until, you know, you have the riffraff yeah. and the real hard doers just give you a hard time, but he's good with them. But now, cars. Cars, you, cars. Mm. You love your cars. Don't you? you have some classics, don't you? I have. Well, I do. I have uh, three classic cars. I think they yep. they would be called historic cars. Any old cars. Old cars. Yeah. Have a '59 Cadillac convertible. That's the one with the big fins. Yep. I uh, have a '65 Thunderbird, a Thelma and Louise Ooh, Thunderbird. Yeah. Yep. If you know the film. Yes. Exactly that car. And I have a 69 Boss 429 Mustang, which is very collectible. Lovely. So I, I drive them quite a lot. Yeah, it, okay, you actually do get them out on the road. Uh, you won't understand this, you boys, but once you get older, you have to keep, it's like a car, you have to keep using it or yep. it just falls to bits. That's the same with me and it's the same with the cars. <laughs> so sunny day, only on a sunny day? No, not at all. Oh, no, you drive in no, any, all so, conditions? Yeah, people say, oh, it's going to rain. I say, yeah. it's only a car, it doesn't know what the weather's like. <laughs> yeah. Did it's you just dry-, dry it down when you're finished. Did you drive one here today? I did. What did you bring today? I drove a 67 Mustang. Wow, that's great. Left-hand drive, yeah. what, <laughs> convertible manual Mustang. That's what are your great. thoughts on the new ones that... Yes. Yeah, they're pretty popular. I think yeah, there was a two-year wait list to get them. Yeah, I, yeah, I think they probably um, probably just uh, signalled that in advance just to uh, have people say, say, oh, we must get one. Yeah, I reckon yeah. you can buy one at the now drop of a hat. Yeah, yeah, millions of them. Well, they've cooked themselves now. Now there's just a massive backlog. Of people. Yeah, they, they want to try and get rid of them now because yeah, they did that marketing the campaign. The well. I live on the um, river where the car-carrying ships come in. Yep. 10 of them a week yeah. and uh, there are more brand new cars lined up there than uh, it yes. is extraordinary there's thousands of them <laughs> tens of thousands of cars just sitting there waiting for wood ducks to buy them mm. it's ridiculous it is ridiculous so what so you've got those cars is that you know, one of them your favorite all-time car or have you got a favorite all-time car that you haven't purchased yet oh no oh, i haven't purchased no i'm my all, oh, I suppose the 59 Cadillac is my all time favourite car, but of course they have no modern, well, when I say they have no mod cons in them, uh, it has cruise control and it has electric windows and electric hood, but That's it doesn't great. have all the other 
they have carburettors and things. They don't have uh, all the chips and things in them that uh, you just take out and re-plug them in. Yes. You've got to actually have a mechanic look after them. So if anything happens to them, how, do you, how would you be able to fix them? Do they have parts for them? Do you have to source them from it, any it, No, no yeah, the, the specialist mechanics that yep. specialise in old American cars okay. and old European cars, and I have one of those men called... Angelo, he Angelo, looks after yeah. it. Uh, he's uh, he's a wizard, and uh, if you've got the money, he'll fix it up for you. How yeah. often do they need uh, to be sent in? Um, not that often, but they they're much more simple cars than the ones today. But they you need a mechanic to uh, tune them up and keep them running properly because they don't have any of the air pollution gear in them. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. You are a uh, avid Twitter user by the looks of it. Uh, I'm not avid. I got into being on the social media. I wasn't even on it probably this time last year. I've probably only been on it a year because someone asked me to stand for the Lord Mayor of Melbourne and I uh, said, oh, I'm not sure about that. And they said, yes, why don't you do that? And they said, have you got a social platform? I said, no. They said, well, you must get on to... Mm. Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, so that's how I started doing it. So once you get on it, um, and then people uh, go backwards and forwards with you, and then yeah. you just, in the end, you just get conned into having an opinion about things. So I quite enjoy it, but I don't. I know I take. I know because people tell me, um, like everyone, I suppose, they, I take a belting. Yeah, uh, I get abuse. I mean, you know. I'm, Sure, most people do too. Because well, we, yeah. we, we've spoken about that. We spoke about the negative comments. Because I don't use Twitter anymore. Mm. I got rid of it after round one this year. Mm. But how, how do you go? Do you go back no. to them, or do you ignore? No, them? I, I couldn't. I, I see, they're for cowards. Yep. Uh, and um, people who just want to be, as Andy Warhol said, famous for fifteen seconds in their life, and they get quite a warm and fuzzy feeling thinking that they've abused people like you or me. Yep. I couldn't care less what yep. people say about me. I have no interest at all. Um, I reply to some of them if um, it just if, if I think it's relevant, I reply to some of them. But if you reply to everyone that has a go at you or think you're this or that, you actually look at it as a sort of a backhanded compliment yep. that people could be so worried about your life that yes. they'll just sit there and think up invective and bad things to say about you. So it worries me not at all. More and more the modern day player in AFL in particular, and Dave, you've quit Twitter, um, uh, uh, finding it, they're having trouble with it, uh, with the comments, with the negativity every day, always people on them telling them they couldn't kick last week, telling them yeah. why, how'd you lose... What did, what did what would your advice be to those guys? So so so, so that's a good question. So it wasn't around in my day. Yep. Nothing was around in my day. But um, drugs, like uh, we, I didn't even know what drugs were back in uh, the sixties and seventies. Well, maybe they were there, but I didn't know about them. But I, I think it's a um, it, it's a great lesson in self-discipline and control because if I was playing football well I can say this about anything yep. if I was playing football and I was on a social platform and someone said you're a dog or you're a coward or you're weak or you're a squib or can't you kick or why don't you give the game away I don't know honestly how that would bother me at all mm -hmm. I mean because you know what you are inside you uh, to be told by people who are you know, a conviction is reserved for those people on the sidelines. Get out there and do it yourself. I mean, it's just, I, I don't know why people... So you can't you, understand, you, and, yeah. you, and you say you got off it because yep. you probably couldn't be bothered trawling through all the trolls, Crap, they call, yep, or whatever yep, trolls, yep. Keyboard warriors. Well, look, so there's two things. Either they don't read them, which, which I don't, but I get told about them. Or just read them and think, you poor, simple pricks, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, so I, I, it wouldn't worry me at all. Yeah. But so I, I was similar to you. So I had, um, so rather than looking at them and then not thinking about it, I had a block list. So I just, every time I saw something negative, I just blocked it. It didn't yeah. really bother me. But it was more the fact that I couldn't be bothered going on online every week and having to do that. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't be bothered. I yes. love, I love the social interaction between 
you and other people, if you put a good comment out and people respond, I love that. That opens up the world yep. to other people being able to talk to you. Yep. Um, that's exactly how this podcast came about. But I just I just couldn't be bothered with that. And no, 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 I'm not bothered with it either, yeah. David. But um, but I the person I live with, yep. she she trawls through it all yep. and she does it for me. And, and I say... I couldn't care less. Yeah. Don't don't block them. Or they, she said, "Oh no, because they if you don't, they just get more confident and they just keep doing it. Yep. And you've got to actually let them know that you're not watching it or yeah. doing or, or yeah, so, whatever." Yeah. So I go the other way. I said, "Just let them do it." And they, she says, "No, nope, uh, it's, it's pointless because they think." Uh, that um, they can they, you just give them confidence yeah. and more leg up to keep going on you. So because um, you hear but, about in the NBA, Kevin Durant had um, burner accounts where he would actually respond on his own feed. So people he did a comment, yep. people would respond and give him abuse, and he would actually comment on his burner accounts, so fake accounts. I said, well, I respond that's to people. Far too yeah. technical. I had no, I couldn't be bothered so even he doing was that. Really getting angst about what people would respond to. He was really being emotional about what people responded so to. So the thing is that uh, if you are an individual, well, we're all individuals, yep. but if you're an individual who you think are getting targeted unfairly, just remember that the whole world is getting targeted yep. unfairly by people who sit in their rooms and have never done anything in their life. Oh, maybe they have done something in their life but just don't like you. And yep. I'll tell you what, there's, you can line up the QNs at uh, Darwin for the people that don't like me. So... Um, it makes honestly it makes no difference yeah. I know who I am so I don't worry about what other people think I am I feel like the negativity takes so much effort too so I couldn't imagine that's how it much, uh, time is spent thinking about everyone else's negativity but anyway um, the t- speaking of Twitter that is now Twitter Facebook Instagram is now I guess the platforms for the new age of media and news and uh, but dangerous because yes because it's politically oriented um, now I don't want to sound political, but uh, Google and Facebook and Twitter and uh, are run predominantly by absolutely left-wing organisations. Particular, well, in the states, that's where they come from, and they have the capacity to uh, influence um, electorates yep. by shadow banning or banning or directing the algorithms in a way that uh, only respond to their favorable comment or what their perception of life is yep. and uh, this is going on in america at the minute where the republican party uh, are facing an election next year with trump and the democrats and uh, the, the democrats are uh, an adjunct to those social medias yep. and the mainstream media and they are working very hard to limit the positive comments that go on that platform uh, that won't do the Republican Party any good. Now, that's yeah. just not, that's not a biased political statement. That is a fact that's what's going on. So that's why it's a dangerous thing because Google is the most powerful organisation in the world. Yeah. It, it is. There's no good... They can control the narrative whichever way they, they want to take it. They can control... Yeah. And, the, and they do. Yep. And uh, it's got to the stage where they're actually thinking of... Um, uh, making a bringing making some lawful change to the fact that they can do that, like breaking their breaking their company up into sections rather than having a dominating the whole field, like Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, Instagram, and all the others. I yep. don't know what the others are. But that's what this technology has done. It's it, I think we spoke about it in the podcast the first couple of weeks that. The improvement in technology has been so rapid that there's no laws that have been able to keep up with these kinds of things. That's exactly right. And that's what's happening with these companies or big organisations are getting away with these things because governments can't keep up. Yeah, spot with to it. see they don't fit into the libel laws, uh, the slander laws. They don't fit fit into any laws at all because no. they're meant to be just a private social platform. Right. Um, but uh, they've they've been underestimated, and the people who are very smart people running them, Zuckerberg and all that, they are just playing them on a playing them on a break. Yep. Well, we've attacked him already in one of the podcasts, but that didn't make it to that. I don't think. <laughs> no, I think we put it out. There. We put it out there. We've, we've, who, who is that? We've Zuckerberg. Called Zuckerberg. Yeah, well, called Zuckerberg. Well, I, I made a comment about a I made a comment about a um, uh, uh, some people on a show over there called The View. Yep. Uh, a bloke, a woman called Joy Bainha, who just, you know, they're just a 
disgraceful, biased uh, people who uh, say irris really irresponsible things, and I uh, attacked them a little, yep. and I got banned. So I got banned on uh, Twitter for uh, a week, yep. uh, uh, and I thought, <laughs> but, and yet some of the things that are said from the opposite point of view just are allowed to go, yes. and that's how they control the narrative, as you say. Yes. I thought, here, I'm in Australia, I got banned. <laughs> you got banned on that's, yeah. that's a great point. Should there be control? Should it be open freedom? But what, what do you think there needs to be, do you think there needs to be control from the platforms themselves? Well, the... Uh, you, one of the main, uh, probably, I think the first, um, the, f the 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 first uh, constitutional edict in America is uh, you got to have free speech. But yeah. then, who determines what free speech? And then it just gets morphed into hate speech. And then someone decides that if I say something about someone is that they are an incompetent fool, they can say. That is hate speech, and you can say, well, then if do you think that's hate speech, um, because it gets angled that way by people who don't want to be criticised because of their bias. Oh. Uh, if you if you have certain groups of people deciding what is hate speech, um, that they end up controlling all the, those algorithms, so that when you say fool or mention someone from a political party, it comes oh. up a red flag comes up and then they they can stop you or shadow ban you or just ban you and yet some of the people on the other side of politics say disgraceful things honestly yeah. uh, and because it generally fits their bias about what's going on in the world they allow them and that's what you're saying there's got to be government regulation at some stage yeah. saying you can't let some people say things about one side and not let the other side respond well, that's a whole other issue about the fact that whatever you type or anything now is getting overwatched by correct. people above you through your phone, through the that's technology correct. that they're watching what you're saying and they develop pretty much a profile that's on exactly every person right. around the world. So. Well, and on one side of that, you're getting banned for, for something and, and someone's coming and banning you. But then what about the bloke that's you know, racially abusing an AFL player, which has happened a couple of times, or saying something and there's no liability on that front? No, that's... Uh, no... That doesn't resonate with people in America who, or or the people who oversee Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. That doesn't resonate with them. If you racially abuse a uh, AFL player, they they have, they don't even know what you're talking about. In order yeah, they, to yeah. to ban them, so yes, it get, you yeah. get away with it. Yeah, but it's self-regulatory a bit. I think. Uh, I mean, if you say racist things about. Um, uh, say so AFL players, um, maybe the the the, uh, the authority, the AFL or the the, the watchdogs of it, um, can take action against you as a person if you're a member of a football club or stop you going to it. I, I'm not really sure yeah. how it works. So well, speaking of that, that you brought up that. So um, the Adam Goods documentary, mm. we we watched that as a footy club on Monday. Uh, have you have you seen that? You well, I'm glad you asked me about that because. Um, I was told I was on the Adam Goods. So you, so you weren't asked permission to sh to video. No. To, to, yeah. No, your, they, uh, yeah. Apparently, they asked Channel Nine if yep. they could use the vision, use vision that yep. I that the the comments I made on the footy show. Footy show yep. And uh, I presume Channel Nine said okay. Yep. Uh, and um, so I then took an interest in what it was that I was being quoted as saying. Yes. And I looked at it and I thought, well, that is just so out of context. I was asked a specific question by Gary Lyon on the footy show yep. about people booing Adam Goods. And I said, well, Adam Goods wants to just not take himself so seriously because if he invites people to boo him because he stages for free kicks, which is what the Hawthorne crowd did, and I stage for free kicks. I have no problem with anything Adam Goods has done, but I was speaking from the fact that Hawthorne people started booing him because he staged for some free kicks and got given them, and then people started booing because he pretended to throw a spear at the Carlton Cheer squad, and they started booing him. And I said to that specific question, Ari, 
Gary Lyon asked me, I said, if you're going to incite people, whether because they think they've been incited, if you're going to incite people and they start booing, you don't start whinging about it. I said, you, uh, said you're a jerk. Is if you if you're going to if the heat's too hot, get out of the kitchen. Don't start it if you can't go on with it. And I thought Adam Goods didn't handle it well at all. Yep. And then it got morphed and just hijacked into racism, and then. The insinuation is because I said that about Adam Goods that I was a racist, and uh, so that's how it gets hijacked. I have it had nothing to do with Adam Goods being a, a an Aboriginal player or an Indigenous player. But if you have a comment, a legitimate this is how we started this conversation. Yeah, yep. If you have a legitimate comment about someone, and they happen to be from another race. Or another gender, a yep. woman in my, if I say something about yep. a woman, or someone who has a different sexual proclivity to me, uh, you then get those lazy, generic, uh, gratuitously stupid terms. You're either racist, yep. homophobic, sexist, when you could have a genuine comment about someone as a person, not what category they're in. Yep. And I refuse to, so I was asked to go on. So the Adam Goods thing, the final quarter, I, 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 they showed it to me personally. Came down to my premises. Yep. They wanted me to watch it. Yep. After I made some derogatory comments about it, saying, "Well, uh, if that's what they're going to put on and using me as a uh, a bit of a clickbait to sell it," I'm, yep. I was on all the ads. Yep. Uh, completely taken out of context. I have no problem with Adam Goods at all. He was a great footballer. Uh, I said, if you're going to be the Australian of the year and stand up and make a speech, for God's sake, try and unite people rather than uh, going on about the race. race. I mean, just don't keep going. Why so does do everyone you, keep going on about it? Yeah, uh, so do you think... If, like, if I have to be told yep. by some scrubber, by some journeyman or woman that... Uh, we shouldn't be right. I mean, what? How insulting to to think that we're not intelligent enough to think that racism is not a healthy thing. Who? Who? Well, who has to tell you that? Yep. Uh, there's a certain section of people out there that do it because they're ignorant and uneducated. And, but honestly and truly, uh, just the insinuation that you're a racist. I painted my face black pretending I was Nicky Winmar 20 years ago. I was accused of being a racist. I don't know why that's racist, but I couldn't be bothered arguing that. But uh, most people don't know what racism is. Uh, racism is if you decry, defile or degrade someone, mm -hmm. think you're superior than them or try mm -hmm. and dominate them. That is the definition yeah. of racism. I don't know that anyone in the community other than a handful of people that want to dominate uh, think they're super superior? Do we yep. think we're? So do I think I'm superior to? What well, that is just such a stupid thing. We live our life. They live their lives. People live their lives. We're trying to unite and get on. But I don't think Adam did himself a hell of a lot of good with that speech on Australia Day or when he was made Australian of the Year. Maybe just try and unite people and say, "Come on," rather than keep going on about it, like a lot of activists yep. do. So, do you think the uh, it's sort of the story got all twisted where you were talking about his football and about the free kicks and, and that kind of thing I, where I the, was, the overall story in that time of, let's say, 2015, of course, 16, 17, was... I, yeah, it all I got, was asked specifically by Gary, why do you think people yeah. keep on booing Adam Goods? And I said, for those very reasons, well, he's, yeah. he's rubbed people up the wrong way. I didn't think he rubbed them up the wrong way. I couldn't care less if he pretended to throw a spear at someone. I thought it was quite actually good. Yeah. I yep. thought it was good. I thought it was quite good on him. Yeah. But, but they, and then they started booing him. And I said, well, that's why they're booing him. Cause, and then the league made, the AFL made the most ridiculous request of all time. They said, oh, it's about time we stop booing uh, people, particularly Adam Goods. Well, that's like red rag to a bull. You tell the public to stop mm -hmm. doing something and they will go over the top trying to do it. Yes. And it was just silly. And then they said, they said, and Adam apparently uh, didn't want to do a lap of honour on the grand final day or whatever. Yep. And I said, I tell you what, if, Anna, if, if Adam Goods had done a lap of honour 
around the ground to end his career, I tell you, there would not be one person in that crowd that would boo him because there's no reason to boo him. Mm. He's not staging for free kicks. kicks. He's not throwing a spear at someone. He's actually driving around in a car. What would you boo him for if he's not... You're celebrating your, his career at that stage. That's, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe it, there'd be a couple of people at booing, but the overwhelming majority of the crowd would, would applaud cheer. him for what he is yep. or was as a footballer. Yep. Not because he's out there doing it, because he's not out there doing it. I've noticed Ga- uh, Gary Ablett Jr. is copping a fair bit of booze lately, which which is interesting as well. Have you yeah. noticed that? Yeah, because he has some empathy for, um, uh, for Israel Folau and his... Um, because they're devout Christians, and um, that's uh, don't stop not for me. his elbows. To the, he's given a couple of elbows. Oh, yeah, well, so of, yeah. of course, yeah, of be, course. Be, so, but this is how this gets hijacked. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. he would be getting. Uh, he's got off two or three charges yep. where you think, well, any lesser mortal would have been rubbed out. So yep. people take exception to that and they boo him, and then the. Um, the, the narrative the, gets then the narrative goes to uh, well he sided with uh, uh, Israel Folau who said gay people should go to hell or whatever or will end up in where purgatory I don't know what he said and uh, so all they jump on him for that they uh, they end up just jumping on stars of the game because they want to try and put them off their game and yep. that's part it's, of it the other the other thing back on the doco um, and this might have been again taken out of t- context so take no. it for what it is. Um, uh, you spoke about on the footy show that the AFL shouldn't be shouldn't be seen yes. as um, to having causes, agendas. yeah, causes yeah, and having right. agendas and that's all that. Correct. Where so say on the weekend we had the challenge game for kids. So not not everything is always a cause of um, negative or, or responding to a negative story. Yeah. They're good yep. causes about dream time, um, cancer, yeah, the country game, all that kind of no, thing. So no. what are your views on the AFL yes. having no. these type of games and rounds? Yeah, that, I'm glad you asked me that as well. Yeah. I got uh, roundly condemned for that. So all these squawking heads came out and said, ah, oh, well, they get involved in great causes like uh, the breast cancer cause. Yep. I said, the AFL have my total um, support if they're going to uh, promote causes which save people's lives and give them a healthier uh, a healthier uh, life, uh, keeping people alive so that they can actually go and watch the football. Uh, it's when you get into, and uh, this is, I got accused of being homophobic, when the uh, gay marriage plebiscite was on, the gay AFL, why the AFL would get involved in telling people or what they should do, people go to the football. I mean, if it's anti-whaling or if it's uh, increase the speed limit or if, if, if people go to the football as a release, they don't want to be bombarded with what they should think about life other than causes that might uh, save it, health causes. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely... Uh, don't back, don't withdraw from that. I don't. And then people say, "Well, the, they're a big organisation. They can get. Yep. They should get involved in community things." I said, "No. So why? Why tell people uh, who? Why? Why divide half the nation who think that? Just say, if, don't tell people about gay marriage. Let them. They've got a. There's a there was a government plebiscite out. Fill it in and send it in. Why yep. do you have to be told by the AFL what you should do? So like. Back to that social, I reckon social media and media in general has opened the whole world up to these things like LeBron James in America, he runs a massive campaign about being more than an athlete um, and they promote these social issues and all that kind of thing and um, I I think you can't, my my opinion is you can't pick and choose so if the AFL want to do maybe a breast cancer thing or that and then they also want to do this like so are you saying that it's great that they do a cause that might help someone's life, but then not another cause for another issue. Is that what? So for so a health, for, health issue? Oh yeah. So you're saying it's great if they do a health issue, but then they can't do another. So another so they topic. have uh, Nick Rewald has the oh, MND yeah, thing Maddie, with yeah, all that kind of oh, thing. So M- and, and MND with uh, uh, Neil uh, Danner. Danner, yeah, yeah. yeah. Breast so cancer. You've breast got challenge for us with the yeah, kids. Yeah. So you're. They might have a prostate round one yes, year. Yeah, yeah. But you're happy for that, but you're not yes. happy for to choose well, another. Well, well, so how is that? How is that dividing the public? What person, what person, man or woman, in the community wouldn't would disagree with um, uh, 
promoting a yeah, well, no uh, promoting would, yeah. something that stops breast cancer. I mean, that's just no one would disagree with that. But a lot of people disagree with being told to have a political view about other things. Yes. And you're saying that's not okay for the well, I'm, to Well, I'm, that I'm just saying keep out of people's lives. Okay. Let them just go to the football. That's the only release they have without being bombarded with what those people think we should think about. Yep. What about players like uh, like Dave who have a following and, and a social media? Do you think they should uh, have their opinions heard on political matters as well? I mean, obviously, the, the health stuff aside. What's that? Do you think that they, as a player who's in the public eye, yes. uh, obviously the AFL is one thing as an organisation, but the players in a public eye should should have so show we, their opinion, have their opinion heard? So we have a coder group called Purple Bombers at Essendon that yeah. celebrates the LBG2IQ. Yeah, no, and it's like we, we, have, we have a round, they come in and we wear the purple beanies and all, we wear the jumpers in the warm-up, that kind of thing. So we support that. Are you saying we shouldn't we shouldn't support that? That side because it, it because it does create a political divide. Are you yeah, I, I actually am saying that. Yeah, uh, yeah. If that's what the question you're yes, asking. Yeah. Why, why, why do you? Why, why is it necessary? Uh, this is a bit like being told uh, you shouldn't be a racist. Why is it necessary to say to people you should be inclusive by respecting people who want to be in the LBG community or want to be transgender men who want to pretend they're women and they are pretending they're women because there's only two binary sexes in the world no matter how many people try and tell you there's a male and a female and if you are a male and signal as you want to be a woman I am absolutely adamant that you should never ever try and infiltrate into women's sport and how ridiculous is that how ridiculous is it for a man to pretend he's a woman and then want to can participate in women's sport. And I don't care if that is transphobic, uh, that is ridiculous. But we are so gun shy, we are so uh, intimidated into not having an opinion like that. Now, I don't know why Essendon or St Kilda play have a gay the pride. pride. Round, yep. uh, why do they, what is the point of that? Do, 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 are they trying to tell people that they're enlightened and uh, you, well, th- you know, th- we're not, we're, well, they're enlightened. Do, do you have to tell people that we should include everyone in society? What, what do you have to tell people that Yeah, for? I think it's been about, about being inclusive in society and welcoming everyone, not necessarily pushing agendas to where you, we're trying to make, we're trying to change your opinion to go, no, you have to accept these people. It's more about them feeling welcome and inclusive in the community, in the football world. Yes. That's, that's how I, I view well, it. Well, that's fair enough. Well, that, yeah. That's fair enough. I don't know why, I don't know why that's necessary to do that. I'm just maybe people are not partially educated enough to think that that's just a reasonable stance to have in this in evolving world that we live in. Yeah. But uh, if you have to tell people that, oh, no, you should respect Because people don't someone. have that stance. That's why. People don't have that stance. I think people don't view it that way. You're, yeah, you're actually, that's, that's a good view that you're saying people should just, that should be the standard, the norm. But people don't view that. So then you've got to have these things where you, you make people feel included and feel inclusive and try and promote people. Fair enough. Yeah, no, that, that's fair enough. I, I only look at it from my point of view. If I'm told I should respect someone for this or that, I say, you don't have to tell me to do that. I'll yeah. do that anyhow. You do anyway, exactly. But we're not, that's, you're probably not the Whether person Whether I agree that. with it or not. Exactly, yeah. So mm. you're probably not the, the person, the story, the talent. There are people out there that need to be shown these things and these people. Yeah, showing those things. Sh- sorry. Yeah. yeah. There's a, no, fair enough. That's fair enough. <laughs> there was a guy in the in the US who took it to the other side of it yep. to show the holes in this uh, issue. Uh, he was a he was I, I guess he was a weightlifter of some sort, and he he then told everyone that he identified as a woman, so that he could go and break the women's weightlifting record. No, but that, that, that that's that's why it's just fraught with danger. Yeah. And transgender sports going to ruin uh, women's sport. Uh, there's plenty of examples of people who transgender and don't succeed, but you only need the one or two who do, like mm. Rachel McKinnon, who rode a bike as a man uh, 18 months ago and decided she'd call he'd call herself a woman and won the World Women's Championships standing on the dais. It, that is the people exploited. There's always people who will exploit it for what it's not meant to be, and that's the danger. And that is going to be 
that is going to ruin women's sport. You watch in the five years, there'll be that many people thinking they want to be famous for 15 seconds and the only way we can is uh, signal as a woman and then all you've got to do is signal as a woman. You don't have to have mm. do any, just say, yeah, I want to be identified as a woman. Sport, sport's the one. The next five, ten years watching that area is, is the one. That's where, right. where does it Where does it get taken? So when I said that, I, so I've said that on our podcast, I said about... Men transgendering into women's sports shouldn't be allowed. And, of course, people like Hannah Mouncey, she bounces out of the block and says, I'm a bigot and a racist and a white supremacist and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I quite openly have said it is arrogant and selfish of men to pretend they're women and want to play women's sport. Uh, it, and I have, I have no problem saying that about her, Hannah Mouncey or anyone else. It is ridiculous and they, it shouldn't be allowed. And you'll say, well, no, in this day and age you've got to include people. And I'm saying to the contrary. You don't have to include people in that particular category. Every I don't care if men marry men or women marry women or the, what, do they want to pretend they're transgender. I don't, it's only if they want to uh, infilt, hijack a sport that they shouldn't be in in the first place. Well, what about uh, the opposite of that, which is women playing men's sport together? And the reason I say this is because I reckon half of the women's uh, cricket team could probably make the Australian cricket team. No, right? that, but... But but that is just a that is just a biological fact that it's if you, if women are no, don't I know that women, <laughs> women just by their biological makeup are not as strong generally in the overall scheme of things as men. But if women uh, are exceptional in there and don't take any drugs and don't they're just good at what they do and can go and play men's sport, that is completely different. Uh, they, because, because the men are superior strength athletes overall than, um, than women. But if yeah. women want to have a crack at going up a level rather than men coming down to play women's sport, I don't mean down as in yeah. uh, importance. Yeah. Uh, uh, so then you get on to, um, you make comments about, I don't know if you're familiar with who Colin Kaepernick is. Yes, yep. Yeah, follow, yeah. So Colin Kaepernick uh, takes a knee, as is the because they don't like about what's going on in the states, yeah. and um, then Nike uh, embrace him as the, as one of. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. seriously. So here is, uh, and I said about uh, the woman who was captain of the. American soccer team, whatever her name is, yeah, yeah, who yeah. trashed, who, who wouldn't stand for the anthem, representing yeah. a country and won't stand Look for up, it. Yep. I said, what, how that is allowed? I mean, you can, you can do whatever you like. How Colin Kaepernick and anyone else in mm -hmm. that person can do whatever they like. How the team allows that to happen is beyond me. Uh, um, and you wait, it'll one day it'll happen here that... Uh, well, he's out of a job now, so the team... Oh, he's a, never, never, happen, but then. never made more money in his life. He's, yeah. he's on a multi-million dollar deal with Nike. Yes. So, so, and they, he told them he didn't agree with putting the American flag on the back of some of their shoes, uh, runners, uh, for... Um, indep or whatever it was, just... Uh, 4th of July. 4th of July. Yeah, 4th yep. of July. Was that Independence Day or yep. whatever yep. it was? And so Nike took him off. Uh, honestly, you've got an American company at, at being uh, being told by a um, uh, someone who is uh, not a patriot and uh, not a patriot to the flag or the country uh, to take or and then uh, this multinational company uh, succumbs to his. It is it is and it's mm. all vaguely to do because Trump's into the flag and. But that goes that. back to your original topic earlier, where the, the companies are creating the narrative. And That's right. Nike would just be part of that, wouldn't they? That's what you're kind of saying. Like Google, they control the digital That's platform. Right. Nike now controlling this narrative with Colin Kaepernick and. They're succumbing to That's right. what he's doing. With how that. much is that PR though? Like, how well, much we're yeah. talking about it? Everyone's going to talk about it. There's going to be people yeah, because outraged. They, because that, that that's a very good they're all point. They're making money. Yeah. That's that's all they're doing is in the bottom line for their shareholders. They are not patriotic at all. Yep. Half the shoes are made in sweatshops over. They have no interest in any of that. They just like most other companies. They just um, beholden to their shareholders. They're not patriots at all. No. They. they 
send the jobs overseas and have the shoes manufactured in the cheapest possible uh, sweatshop conditions, then bring them back and say, aren't we great? We're an American company. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, that's just the way that's the, that's that's the, way, is, the, yeah. way the world is. Yeah. But that's what they're trying to stop. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, well, now let's get back to um, Australia. Uh, the AFL, we're obviously played AFL and state of the game mm-hmm. where do you where do you see the state of the game have you watched much footy this year no no okay so you don't know much about well the 666 rule all that and the no scoring all yeah, that kind no, of thing. I where, where do you where I do you know see, all about that mate. yeah where do you see yeah. the state of the game right now like, how, how do you well well, well this is my opinion right? yeah so in my opinion what the AFL are trying to do by default is make the game more entertaining yep make the game back to what it was known for many years ago. That is, designated people kicking goals, yep. maybe a hundred or more a season, people playing generally in positions, people generally taking a number of marks over their head quite often, yep. uh, people being able to kick the ball to position uh, quite a long way down, people generally playing in positions, and uh, they're trying to bring the spectacle of the game. Yep. I don't care what you say and I'm very happy for you to disagree with this. Mm-hmm. There is a handful of games in the year that are fantastic. I'll cite you the grand final last year. It's probably one of the best games I've ever seen because neither side tried to save the game before it was lost. Uh, neither side really kicked the ball backwards and did overdid the handball. Uh, no, uh, either coach decided, well, let's roll the dice and have a go at it even up until the last instant when... uh, So what has happened is that the coaches who get paid a lot of money and want on their CV a win-loss ratio that uh, is uh, is, uh, appealing to uh, the next job they go for, they say, oh, yes, we coached the side and look, we only lost 10 games, 40% of the games we played in or whatever... And what happens is they become so defensive to start with. So as soon as someone, here's a challenge for, as soon as someone breaks the paradigm, breaks the mould of the way the game's played and actually picks people who are designated goal Mm -hmm. kickers and picks people to actually stay vaguely on the forward line, a couple of people so that when we get the ball up the back we actually have someone to kick to, take a chance that uh, you could kick it to a contest and because you've recruited well, you've got a big strong forward, maybe like Jeremy Cameron or someone like that, who one out can take a mark because you can't flood back too quickly to uh, you can. But all those rule changes are designed specifically to make that happen in a um, uh, uh, fabricated way. And uh, I don't go to the football. I, I, I just, I've, I'm a great, I'm a great Geelong, oh, well, I'm yeah. not ever so great, I'm a no. Geelong supporter. Yep. I've seen, I watch Geelong play yep. occasionally on the television. And they do it just like every other side. They It is just a game of keeping up a rolling pack yep. of players just offloading the ball because they get and then chipping it over there. And you invariably look down the ground and you think, my God, if there was someone down there, yes. surely you could kick it to them. They might actually beat the person they're on because yep. they haven't terrific advantage the forward. The backman has to wait until he sees what the forward's going to do. Yep. So... Uh, and the umpiring is so anal and so pedantic, and I keep saying this, never blame the people that work for you. Blame the people who employ you in the first place. And if you couldn't tell the umpires to step back a minute and not pay every single goddamn free kick that you think is there or you imagine there, just oversee the game don't try and control it yeah so i don't go for all those reasons i watched the storm i watched um cameron, cameron smith, smith plays 400th game playing cronulla yep. and i was kept alternating between that game and geelong and st kilda yeah last saturday night last yep. set i was there i was bond at the same time and when there was a goal scored i switched back and vice versa yep i couldn't tell the difference between the two games they were played exactly the same mm-hmm. except 
Rugby is meant to be played like that, <laughs> where you all run in packs and offload the ball backwards yep. to one another because yep. you can't pass it forward. Yep. And you would think that both sides were actually trying to play the uh, rugby league uh, handbook. The same way. It was exact. It was uncanny to watch, <laughs> except for the occasional time that you had to have a shot at goal and kick the ball forward. It was uncanny. Well, the rule changes probably haven't worked to what they wanted. Like the scoring is down quite a lot this year. Do you? So what? What, what well, would you propose? Like keep someone in full fifty at all times, or two players? To try and play the, a traditional full forward. You've always got a full forward, full back against each other. So how about we don't worry about any rule changes? How about a coach says... Just a coach, yeah. Just says... You stay because we have no designated goal kickers, yeah. say... So if Tony Lockett was playing today, or yep. Jason Dunstall, or maybe well, Wayne Carey wasn't a full forward, but if... if the, whoever, yeah. Whoever. Um, I'll tell you... When I was commentating on the football uh, on the radio, M- Matthew Richardson was playing, and Matthew Richardson started playing at maybe full forward and certainly centre half forward. And in the end, Richmond had so many people up the back line mm. that he ended up playing on the wing, yep. uh, because he was he thought I'm just I'm not in the game. Might as well I'm go up and see if I can get a kick. Yep. And so, so that's how silly it became uh, that they all stay in the 50 meter arc on the back line and they all move forward and then they get it to the center line and they think shit there's no one to kick it to so we'll kick it across the ground yeah so i'm saying to you the don't the rule changes are a artificial way of making the game bring back to what it was yep. now i've said this plenty of times before and this will people's eyes glaze over this is the simplest way to fix the problem and this is where i got in trouble with someone like Wahid, Al- uh, M- M- Wahid Ali. Ali. Ali yep. You remember when a politician in Queensland called Fraser Anning said something about Muslims, be careful about the Muslim influx, all that, yep, right? Yep. So the AFL then got two Muslim players, um, ba- Basha, Basha, one, Basha yep. and the, another one from Essen. Who Adam Saad. Was it Saad? Well, they got them time? to shake hands yep. at the start yep. of a game yep. to show that we weren't um, Islamophobic. Yes, everyone got around at the end of the round. Yeah, that's right. We weren't yep. Islamophobic. Yep. This is, this, here we go again. Do you have to be told we're not Islamophobic? So the AFL decided we'll push that political agenda. And then the very next day, well, this is when the rule changes, they got Wahid Ali to go into AFL and give his a view on football and the rule changes. And I thought, <laughs> he might know as much about football. It was such a virtue signalling. I have told, I have rung um, Gillan McLaughlin, yep. who's never rung me back. Yeah. I've played for, I've played all my life. I know, have a good idea on how to, no one's ever asked me, why would yes. you ask? And I'm, it sounds like I'm being Islamophobic myself. He's a fan of the game because he's, uh, of, um, he, because he's a Muslim. They decided this would be a good week to ask him, what, what is that about? Yep. And he might have some very good ideas, but so of a, that, that is my point about all yeah. just the virtue signalling of just, that is just nonsense. Yep. Uh, so here, this is what I would have told... Um, Dylan McLaughlin, yep. and I want you to think about this. Yep. There is an art, there's a square there in the first place around the ground. Uh, it's there, it's yep. already there. So yep. you don't have to go to get a marker and put it out there and say, that's a new thing we'll do. We'll mark out a square. It's already there. Yep. Why don't we use it? So that the, uh, and it's already a rule that only four players from each side can be in the centre square to centre bounds. Yep. The, what about we just go that extra millimetre and say, don't let anyone in the centre square until those people in it already get the ball out. Get the ball out yep. So what will happen is, surely what will happen, this is logical, instead of standing on the line and when it's bounced all running towards the sphere of action, what they'll do is they'll do exactly the opposite. They'd have to because eventually someone from one of the sides is going to get the ball and if you're standing on the line... What would be the point of that? Yes. As soon as it, you realise that one of your teammates has got it, you You've would go it. run down towards the forward line. Yeah. So he's got something to kick it to. Yes. Uh, that, that seems to me the most simple. I've said this for 10 years. Yep. 
No one is. No one has ever uh, said that that'd be a good idea. Uh, no one has ever. Uh, oh, as I said, I rang Gillan McLaughlin up. Got his number. Know him. Nice yeah. person. No, he's got Wahid Ali in to give him. Uh, uh, no, it sounds like I'm knocking Wahid. I'm just knocking the absolute. The fact they're asking obvious, a fan gratuitous that not, yeah. virtue signalling on the day that it happened. Uh, we're asking Wahid Ali in to come and give his opinion on rule changes. They might be very valid and very sensible, yeah. but I tell you what. Um, give, give if that is not if that is not doing what I'm saying it's doing why you'd have to have why you'd have to be told we shouldn't be Islamophobic or we shouldn't be anti-Semitic or we shouldn't be racist or so but it's just hurting people it's like herding cats it's yep. hurting people into a political point of view which most of us have anyhow. Yep. And if you haven't got it, what, what, why do you have to be lectured by... Uh, you just let people work it out themselves. Oh, be yeah. self-regulatory in the end. I mean, if you get people abusing, racial, racially abusing in the crowd, people turn on those people and say, come on, mate, yeah. settle down. Wake up to yourself. Surely yeah. they do. They do, yeah. Well, they do. They do. They do, yeah. Uh, the bigger problem is the disgraceful language that goes on, uh, just not directed, not racially or directed or homophobic or it's just the some just of the, the language, language yeah. is disgraceful yeah well the and the, the, the physical beauty there's been fights at the AFL crowd right. these days yeah it's getting out of hand quite a bit that's right you see the crowd controllers well now walking around and okay so behavioral the, awareness so officers. so you remember i said about half an hour ago yeah never blame the people that work for you yeah blame the people that employ you in the first time so how about the people who employ the crowd controllers say, this is what we want you to do. Yes. Whether the crowd controllers are from India, uh, uh, Arabs, uh, Jews, uh, Australians, uh, I'm well, telling you, yep. this, you don't have to have been brought up with the game. This is what we want you to do. When someone has invective in front of kids and starts abusing people's head too much to drink, you quietly walk down and say, sir, madam, I'm going to ask you to leave now because you're out of control and then you have four or five people go down and then when his friends or her friends start pushing the security yep. we bring some more people in yep. and we eventually escort them out of the ground and we say we won't tolerate it you only have to do that for a month mm -hmm. and people would realize or the people standing next to him say you better watch your language because you'll have the uh, mr plod come yep. down uh, so it doesn't matter if you've been brought up with the game or not. No. Tell people what you expect That's of them. The if you job. employ them, tell them what your job requirements are and stick to them. And yes. if you don't do them, you get the sack. Yes. Yeah. So Very good they point. took it a bit far and, uh, well, and they went onto the ground to so, try so, to break yeah. up a fight. So, so Did you see that? So, so wouldn't the person, so exactly. you would employ someone, you say, no, mate. Don't go onto the ground. Yeah. It's nothing to do with what happens. <laughs> yes. to there's, um, there's 84 umpires and officials there and there's cameras. Keep off the ground. We yep. want you to police the patrons. Yes. And if you think there's antisocial behaviour, either radio That's up right. to the uh, controller or uh, take the appropriate action that we've told you how to take. Yep. Yep. It's a, it's a good fact. It's yeah, a it's training a, uh, exercise that needs to be that's, implemented. That's, that's, so that's the people who employ yeah, you. Yes. Then yep. give you the job description. Yep. Don't rely on them to use their uh, intelligence <laughs> or their uh, uh, wherewithal. Just go and control the crowd. Like just that's, that's go almost, and do what we tell you to like, do. Yeah, that's almost like the message they're going. They're going, just go control the crowd. Do it in any way that's you right. want to do it, yeah, which yeah. is wrong. Yeah, meant, that's right. This is, you these are the processes you're meant you meant to go through. You don't assault people. You don't manhandle yeah. them. Uh, which is easy to get into. Yes. Assaulting is just actually putting your hand on someone these days. Yes. So it's easy to do that when they're all pushing and shoving and then that's in this litigious society. It goes to the next level and suddenly I know this only too well. Yes. How, how often did that happen? You did straight talk for how many years? A long time. I uh, no. Yeah, no, uh, 24 years. And uh, um, no, 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 we never had... Um, no, 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 we never... We had security there to stop people... Trying to be Andy Warhol's again by throwing things at you and f getting on and mooning and fucking f <laughs> doing things. But well, no, we never had any, ne never had any problems. Well, speaking of, say, you know, all too well, I don't know if you were referring to the skateboarding incident. Was that, mm -hmm. yeah, was that what you're referring to, how it then can be considered oh, yeah, as assault? Oh, oh, oh. And all, that was, 
That was just blown way out of the proportion. I'll tell you. I'll yeah. tell you this now. I did, this is, this is, yeah. The skateboarding thing. I said, how, how am I the how am I the story here? <laughs> yeah. um, these people are. Uh, I've got nothing against skateboarders or skateboarding. Yeah. But they're wrecking all the infrastructure where I live, jumping on all the yeah. stonework. Yeah. That's why they put those little metal strips. So yes. you, but they tear them off. Yeah. And there's a sign up. Not even written. It's a line across a skateboard. You don't have to be intelligent. You don't have to be educated to know that you shouldn't skateboard yes. here because yeah. it's just a skateboard with a red line through it. And I walked out and I said, because no one else will do it because no one else wants to get their head beaten in. Yeah. I said, don't skateboard here, boys. And that was I'm lucky I was videoing it and they were. And mm-hmm. then it escalated to the next level because I said, and they said, all right, we won't. So I walk up the road and they did. So I walked back and I said, right. And I took the skateboard and I said, I'll throw it in the river if you do it again. And that's how it started. Yeah. They want to be on the get the famous, get famous, so yeah. they sent it into the station. Luckily, I had a, my version of it and yeah. they, the news backed down a bit when they realised, I was coming here today. Now, this will, I might walk out, there might be cameras out. I was walking here, here today and I was coming out of a service station in my car and... Uh, you look to see if you can go across the footpath, no in there. So I look up to see if I can enter the carriageway and a mad woman on a bike riding on the footpath rode into the side of my car. Yeah. And I, I said, is this for, like, where'd you come from? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, footpath is for pedestrians, yeah. but the bike is Bikes for the road. The road yeah. Well, she went berserk. She said she started pushing her bike into the door of my car and I thought, so I got out and the tram stopped. I'm sure that I'm sure this will be on the news. Someone already, yeah, recorded um, it. Yeah. So exclusive. A bloke yeah. came over and thought I was harassing a woman, and then he said, "Saw what had happened," and he said, "Oh, he backed." He backed. And down, the yeah. woman started abusing me, and I said, "I first of all said, how, how do you want me to see you? I could give you riding riding down the bike at twenty. I would look to see if there's any pedestrians. You're not a pedestrian. Yes. You rode into me." Anyhow, then I got out, so I started abusing it. Oh, like it just developed into. <laughs> you think this you is follow the rules, it doesn't happen. It's so illogical. Like so I'm standing there, and this, she's saying, "Yeah, oh, you're a this." I don't know if she knew. Well, she said, "Yeah, oh, you're a this and that," and I thought. So <laughs> then I let go of her. So I'll I'll probably be. All, <laughs> so that's this morning. That happened just before. That's here. just coming okay. here. Okay. It's, it's such a. I'm sure the tram people hanging out of the tram. Would have been filming. Something. I uh, I swore at her. I did swear at her, and I called her some uh, un, uh, unsavoury names. Yep. <laughs> and uh, those and and. Uh, We'll see uh, if that makes it to the news tonight. Uh, oh God. People might have been recording it, but they might not have seen you. Depends what angle. You don't know. I don't know. Uh, you, can you can bet. Yeah, you can bet. Something will happen. That, that what I said was absolutely the fact. Yeah. You can bet that I uh, drove into a woman who was riding a bike on the footpath, on the footpath. and then got out and abused her. That is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just so... There's a lot, uh, she, she, I'm happy to say that she, uh, there's so many mentally deranged people. She, she was mad. Yeah. She was after a. She was, I think, trying to prove a point that bike riders have carte blanche to do anything. <laughs> but uh, if you think I just drive across a footpath without looking, <laughs> I looked. There was no one there, and then suddenly the bike came out of nowhere yeah. while I was looking up to see if I could get into the traffic the yeah. other way. Yeah, oh, dear. Uh, just proves your one of my favourite quotes of yours, Sam, and I've lived by this: is that ninety eight percent of the population are idiots. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah, not long out of the jungles. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Anything you want to talk about? Uh, Bring up. You enjoy playing football? Yes. yes you do? Very much. Yeah, well, not yet. Yeah, well, not the game is. Yeah, I, I agree with you that the game needs some, a little bit of changing, but I think... I disagree with you a little bit in terms of um, I don't think coaches are going to are going to change it just by you saying a coach come in and be the new innovative coach yeah. to create a new system. What do you disagree with me about? In Which terms I'm of that, no, I'm, I agree with you in saying. So hear me. There. I agree with you in saying that uh, it'd be great if a coach came in to change yes. the way of play, but I don't think it'll happen because so many coaches are that negative style that it has yes. to be rule changes that have to manufacture okay. it first okay so, sense? yeah so okay so i said the simplest way to write is, it yeah is that square thing yep no one ever th- no one ever logic they say oh well what happens if the ball just goes close to the line and it hasn't quite gone over you can't what happens do then would people be standing on the line wanting to put their hands i said 
They wouldn't be. Why would they be there? They'd be down the other end of the ground, wouldn't they? So hoping someone will get it either from there, and if they don't get it, the other person will get it and kick it back up over back the, the square other the other way. What would you be there for? They, they try and find, which I'm very happy, try and find absolute uh, arguments about every single thing you put up, yep. and, which is good, that's good, but there's not one logical reason why anyone yeah. gives you that it wouldn't wouldn't work. Well, the only way you, you trial it is, you, yeah, you trial it in a pre-season game or a, a VFL pre-season game and go from there, which is what they did last year with the... The square, the kick-out square, and they realised that synth- the look of the game just looked ridiculous with a square 20 metres long or whatever. Ridiculous. And they, oh, God. Yeah, I'm and they so changed, glad I didn't do that. Yeah, that's right. changed it to them. Back and that's the hence field. my point. They made the elongated the square. Well, we've got a square in the centre yeah. of the ground already. Mm. Yeah, already, yeah. It's, it's, why don't we use it? Just use it. Just the 666 it. rule, uh, firstly, is an easy segue to that rule, though, now, maybe. That, uh, they, they that's right. So started, you don't have gone. to have a 66. You just have to just do that. And um, yeah, anyhow. Yeah, it's all easy to say <laughs> in theory and practice is probably. But I, but I do think I do think rule rules have to be manufactured by the AFL to change it. I don't think coaches are going to, um, especially now with defences set up. That if you all of a sudden put yeah two forwards in the forward fifty and say we've got targets to kick to, teams will set up their defenders there that their forwards yes. are so far out of play that you yes. won't be able to get it to them. So that's where I think yes, it has to be but, manufactured. But, but yeah, you know that's correct. Yeah. But, you never, this is when I was ruck coaching, I, and I've ruck coached a lot of clubs, I, I say never or never be predictable to the people you play against, be yep. the predictable to the people you play oh, with. Yeah. So you wouldn't just go and stand at full forward and centre forward, you might stand on the forward flank or on the wing, and as soon, it's like gridiron, they they run, that NFL football, yep. they run to a predetermined position without even looking at the person who's got the ball, yep. they know they've got to run to there, turn around and the ball should be on its way to them, so if you had the designated forwards, not starting in there, standing at centre yeah, forward, just, yeah. just stand, and then know when someone... Got on the back line, got the ball. They make a beeline for the some predetermined spot yep. uh, on the forward line, so that the man who's kicking it doesn't have to look for someone to kick it to, because he knows his his teammate gonna, will yeah. be there. Yes. Because that's how we've trained, and that's the pattern of play. Yeah. And the bloke getting the ball knows that when someone on the half back line gets the ball, he is going to kick it to me because I'm going to be at a predetermined, which is worth yeah. a try, isn't yes. it? I mean, yeah. now it's just you get the ball and you look around and when the umpire says, move it on, so you chip it over mm. there and then you say, move it on again and chip it back here until uh, it's, just, it's, yeah. it's just unwatchable. Yeah. Unless well, you're playing it. Yes. <laughs> One last thing before we wrap it up. Yep. Um, the footy show. Yeah. Um, I think they've announced that in grand finals going well they've announced that yep i'm um, um, exciting are you, are you excited are you, for that are you a part of it uh, well i i i, I was um, re- uh, um i was retained uh, this year and, and for next year to do bits and pieces uh, yep. but i was uh, virtually uh, sacked from well, well, well my contract was up and yep. i could see the footy show wasn't going on under its present format uh, so they um um, they the last show I was on it was the grand final show last year which was yep. you know 650,000 people watch yep not because I was on it because it's a good show so they think they'll replicate that this year but um, um, I'm not sure what they want me to do but uh, I'll be doing uh, I won't be guided too much by them this time yes. I mm-hmm. think I know what people want to yep. watch or what is entertaining to them and uh, so I'll have a far different input into it, and if I don't, I won't be on it. <laughs> if you could, uh, if you that. could, if you could make your own no holds barred AFL footy show, yep. what would you do right now? Well, I'd have um, uh, uh, people who are uh, personalities in their own right, because it's all driven on uh, camaraderie mm-hmm. and the uh, the uh, association you have with people and the by play. Uh, uh, and we would uh, certainly have um, uh, some segments that were popular on the footy show. We'd bring them back uh, because they all, the stations, no matter what, they all jumped into the lifeboats yeah. and uh, very careful about uh, who we should have on and what we should say and what things. And, 
You only had to see how, how they made the footy show up this year of the people on it. And uh, if you think that's a criticism of the people on it this year, not at all. Uh, they were asked, would they be on a footy show? And they said, my word, yes. we will. That's yeah. their job. Mm. They offered a job and they took it. Once again, this is the fifth time I've said this, never blame the people mm. who work for you. Blame the people who employ oh, yeah. you. Yep. Why they'd put those people on a footy show is beyond me. But it's not their fault. Yep. Mm. Yep. Just Looking don't get it, just don't get Zachary out dancing. That's I think we'll avoid that at all costs. No, so. I did that in the footy show yeah. in two thousand nine, no, and that no, was mate. a long time ago. <laughs> no, mate, I remember you coming on the footy show, and yep. uh, and and, and this, that that is quite a good point. Um, the clubs used to say, "Oh, gee." They used to be reticent about it, sending their players on in case we took the piss out of them or sent them up or got them to sing. And, uh, and uh, but shit, this is not, uh, this is not um, splitting the atom. No. This is not nuclear physicist no. stuff, mate. This is so be being them. lighthearted yeah. and a spirit of revelry and merriment and satire yeah. and a little bit of parody showing people other than running out in the football field what they might do and trying to make them generally uncomfortable with some of the yes. questions we ask and seeing how they handle it. I mean, honestly and truly, that was entertaining, yes. I thought. Yes. But you'd be amazed at the number of clubs that said, oh, no, I don't think we can send him in. We're not <laughs> sure what, what did you going to get him to do. It's not the questions you're asked, it's the answers you give yes. and how you handle it. And there was plenty of people backstage to advise People yep. like you and anyone else say, oh, if you're asked this, just say you just have a go at me, for example. You know, yeah. people love the players having a go at me. So. Well, it's funny on that. So we had we had a rundown of the whole show and they used to say, this is probably what you're going to ask, this is what you're going to ask, this is who's going to ask it. And they go, Sam, Sam might just ask you anything. So we actually can't <laughs> tell you what he's going that's to run right. with. Yeah, And it was great. Like, that's you, you right. And, the and then if you know that that's going to happen, you say... And I used to say to people, I never used, to, I never used to rehearse, or never yep. used to tell them. That's how I thought it should be done. Yep. But I've said to plenty of people, if I ask you something and you can't or don't answer, it's stuck. Say, you've been out in the dressing room thinking that all up all morning, <laughs> all, all night, Sam. Well, have a go at me. Yeah, people love back. you having a go at me, and yep. don't feel embarrassed because I'm up for it. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, and they, but they. Just, but they'd think, because I'm an elder statesman of it, that they wouldn't yeah. like to no. be you a smart... You want us to go back at you. Yeah, absolutely, because yeah. people love that. Yes. Uh, they think, oh, young buck told that stupid old prick. Put him in his place, they love it. Yes. And I was up for that because that's how it works. Yeah. That's theatre. I heard that you would get the players that were on the show to sign your rundown every yes. time they were on. Yes, I did, yeah. He yeah. did that, yeah. Uh, what, do you have a favourite guest in terms of player that you might not have expected to be? Uh, came on the show? No, no, no. They're all the we, we, we're all very grateful for them coming in uh, because yeah. it's it's a bit daunting, really. Mm. It's the first time. Uh, it's a bit daunting. Some yeah. people love it, and yeah. some people think we well, just watch as a kid growing up, and then all of a sudden that's you right. get thrown onto it. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. So, it would be so it's a bit daunting for for them, uh, but we think uh, we think the immediacy of being on there and the we would never ever try to. We were very grateful people come. We never ever tried to embarrass people um, uh, unkindly or mm -hmm. to take the piss out of them uh, unmercilessly. We was always tongue in cheek stuff, and it yep. was never pointed. And it was never meant to be abusive or no. uh, uh, salaciously uh, uh, stupid. But it probably got that way in some <laughs> stages. But we just hope the people who are on it would uh, be able to handle Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Twenty-four years of rundown sheets for people signing. That's a yeah, lot. Yeah, I've got twenty-five. Got them all? I, I get twenty-five. Uh, Where do you keep them? You well, I just used to uh, after the when I get home after yeah. the show, just put them in a big uh, box in the garage. Yep. And uh, it's amazing when it started off. They run just about two pages, and yeah. the last running sheet that I had was. 20 pages of time to within an inch of its yes. life of when things happen. And I thought that's the changing world yes. of television. People want it to be slick. Yep. And I've never seen the front bar, but I've got a feeling they don't have too much of a running show. No, they I don't just, like it. No. Uh, I, really, that's I how, really enjoy that show and it reminds me well, of early days. That's how we, start, day that's how we started and then we got uh, corralled yes. into, uh, <laughs> I don't know what we corralled into, got corralled into. It corralled helps that they've into. got a few few beers on the table maybe. Oh, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we weren't allowed to yeah. mention of smoking. Course. We weren't allowed to mention drugs. We weren't allowed not to take them. We no, just weren't allowed to even yeah. have a disco. We weren't yeah. allowed to even have drinking on it. We yeah. had to, mm. we, uh, and they've got the carton draft beers there. Just, yeah. No, we weren't allowed to do any of that. 
yeah, just people and ring in and say it's just isn't it disgraceful that you're promoting yeah, people drinking and uh, yeah have you, do you know of uh, joe rogan uh american ufc commentator um, UFC, comedian. yeah, no, no. No. Uh, he's a co- he's a comedian. Josh as well. Rogan, no, Joe, oh, Joe, Joe no, yep. yeah, he's got a, he's the biggest podcast in the world. He's mm. uh, um, he they oh, he obviously talks a lot about UFC, a lot about fight, mm. has a lot of fighters on, but he's a comedian as well. They do uh, what he calls the UFC uh, fight companion show. He has his, his, if he's not calling the, the fight, he'll have his mates over. They'll watch the fight. Yep. They'll drink and <laughs> they'll get smoke blind, joints yeah. and get high. Yeah. And commentate on the fight on his podcast. Yeah. Most listened to podcast in the entire world. But it's because with podcasts, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You don't have a Channel 9 or Channel don't have 7. A, and that's right. Don't have a you. broadcasting commission to tow some to imaginary major. line that they put. Yes. So I'm thinking yeah. that maybe yeah. for, for if, you, if you get into finals, Dave, yeah. maybe what we'll do is we'll do an AFL Dave, a Zaka companion uh, yep. episode. So you can watch us play. I invite finals. you to come. We'll have some beers and we'll just watch the game <laughs> <laughs> and let it fly. Mm. And you can talk shit about <laughs> the game. <laughs> yeah, I can do that, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy, it's been an absolute right, pleasure good. to Thanks. have you here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Thanks for watching another episode, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. It was a great one from our point of view. Make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube, guys. Make sure you don't miss an episode whenever they drop. And if you want to listen on any of your podcast devices, Apple or Spotify, make sure you subscribe to that and give us five-star review and leave us a comment. See you next time.